Hey nerds, Dylan's wife here. Welcome to my husband's channel. And this time, I will be your tutor hosting the third episode of his tutorial series. This one is different because he believes that my voice could motivate you guys to finish the tutorial and hopefully attract more audience to grow his channel a little bit faster. Also, the techniques he shared in the previous two episodes are completely original from himself. But in this episode, the trick is originally from another tutorial maker on YouTube called Cody Wrench. He did some great videos showing us how to procedurally generate stylized effects like explosion and tornado. We will be modifying his methods to create something new in every scene. Today's topic is to create this muscle flash visual effect, which is usually done in other compositing software like After Effects. You can find thousands of tutorials teaching you to put 2D stock footage as a layer on top of your video, but we are gonna make it to the next level, creating the muzzle flash with a real 3D mesh instead of 2D texture plane. So you don't need to worry about the camera tracking or lightning issues that exist when you do it in 2D. The essential part of this trick is to stack modifiers on some primitive objects, so the base mesh will be turned into a complex shape that we want. The shader, by comparison, is extremely easy to set up. And as always, we will be animating the objects in the end. Let's start with the simple sphere, but we are not using the default one. Instead, create a cube and give it a subdivision modifier with the levels of 4. Then apply the modifier so we get a rounded cube with enough polygons to play around. Get into edit mode, select all vertices, press Shift, Alt, and S. Then drag your mouse all the way to the right until the cube turns into a sphere. While all the vertices are selected, go into Object Data Properties panel, create a new vertex group, and assign all the vertices into this group. Some of the modifiers in the next few steps will be using this vertex group to deform the mesh. Now go back to the modifier panel, add one more subdivision modifier with the level of 1 so we get even more polygons and we can keep it this time. Create an empty object, move it somewhere on the top, and call it controller top. Do the same thing to create two more empty objects in the center and at the front, then rename them to be controller center and controller front respectively. This will be the controllers for some of our modifiers to use during the mesh deformation. Add a vertex weight edit modifier, check the group remove option and then set the threshold to be something like 0.85. Choose the group we just created previously as the vertex group. Open the fall off tab, choose custom curve type, then invert the x and y value by dragging them up and down, so we get this decreasing linear graph. Next, open the influence tab, create a new texture and choose the Voronoi type. In the colors option, enable the color wrap, change it from linear to ease, and adjust the handles to be from white to black while the alpha value to be 1. Go back to the modifiers, change the texture coordinates from local to object, and select our controller top empty. We did a lot of work on this vertex weight edit modifier, but nothing happened to the mesh as we can see in the viewport because what we just did is to assign different ways to different vertices on the mesh. So later on, we can use other modifiers to choose some of the vertices to be invisible based on their weights and make the mesh look like it's been fractured. But before that, let's deform the overall shape of the mesh first. Add a display modifier, create a new texture and you will find that it's actually using the same texture we set up previously. That is totally fine unless you want something very different. Go back to the modifiers, choose the object coordinates and then pick the controller top. Then shrink the strength a little bit. We are done with the first display modifier setup. Now simply duplicate this displace modifier and shrink its strength and mid-level further, so we get the interesting displacement on top of the previous one. Don't forget to pick the controller top as object since Blender doesn't copy this slot when you duplicate modifiers for some reason. From here, you can move the controller top empty object and see the mesh deformation will be changed accordingly. So we can easily animate the look of the mesh by simply keyframing the location of the controller object later on. Next, let's make it fractured by simply adding a mask modifier and choose our vertex group, done. As you can see, now most of the vertices are gone. 
This is because our group remove threshold in the previous vertex weight added modifier was set to a large value. It means any vertices with a weight that's below this value will be removed by this mask modifier. So the lower this value is, the more vertices will be visible. Play around with the threshold to get the best look you want in your scene. So far, we created a fractured sphere mesh, but we all know that muzzle flash is actually directional. So we want to stretch the mesh along a certain axis. To do so, add a warp modifier. Pick our controller center in the object from slot and pick the controller front in the object to slot. So now, you can move the controller front to adjust the length and the direction of the stretching effect. You can also change the size of the controller object to decide how natural the end of the mesh will be. We can also create a new texture for the warp modifier to add in some details. And I will be using the cloud type instead of the Voronoi. I'm pretty happy with the result by now, but you can tweak the mesh deformation a little bit further by using some other modifiers. For example, add a smooth modifier with parameters you like, or a decimate modifier after all the previous ones to reduce some polygons from the end result. This method heavily relies on the vertices weight, so you can always go back to the vertex weight edit modifier to adjust the group remove threshold at any stage. Because every time you add more modifiers, the mesh will be changed and you want to keep the deformation under a reasonable level. Now we are done with the basic mesh setup. The next step is just to duplicate this object and place them in some random positions in a 3D space. Also move the controller objects so different meshes will be pointing to different directions. I recommend to Google some muzzle flash pictures as reference so you can follow the shape and make your muzzle flash look realistic. For the shader setup, I think I don't need to explain anything and you can learn it by looking at the screen for just 3 seconds. Yeah, it's that simple. Mix an emission node and a transparent node. You can actually create two shaders, one set to be orange and the other set to be yellow. Assign these two shaders to different objects randomly, so your muzzle flash will have some color variety. As always, the last part of the tutorial is to keyframe the animation, and we are going to use the same old trick again. Key the location of the controller top on the first frame and get into the graph editor. Select the Y location value, open the modifiers tab, and add a noise modifier with the parameters you like. Done. If you pay attention to the muzzle flash in action movies, or even in real life if you have a chance, it's actually not continuous. Because the bullies are being fired out of the muzzle one after another, you will only see the flash when a bullet is triggered, but before the next one comes out, there's nothing happening. To achieve that, go into the shader editor, keyframe the factor of the mixed shader. Here we want frame number 1 to be 0, frame number 2 to be 1, and frame number 3 to be 0 again. That's enough for our menu keyframing. Now go to the graph editor and add a cycles modifier. So Blender will automatically loop the keyframe value between 0 and 1 forever. It's pretty straightforward. When the factor is 0, the shader is emitting light. When the factor changes to 1, the shader becomes completely transparent. Do this animation to both the yellow and the orange shaders. We finally finished this animated muzzle flash in 3D. I hope this video is helpful to you, because it's not to me. I don't understand a single word about this Blender software and I'm just doing the voice recording by reading the script. Make sure you smash the subscribe and the like buttons to support my husband's channel if you want me to host again in the future. Alright, stay safe and always be creative guys, we will see you in the next one.